in the hope that maybe we can all move on from the part of the Oscars that, well, we all, including myself, talked to death. How about we talk about one of the winners that I saw? And ironically, the winner that was supposed to be announced instead of that thing happening. But I have now seen Summer of Soul, winner of Best Documentary Film at the most recent Academy Awards. This is a film um, made by Questlove, and it's, well, I'll just say it up front. It's really good. What it's covering and what it's talking about is... Uh, a Harlem cultural festival. It's a mu- it was a music festival in Harlem at the end of the 60s. This happened the same summer that Woodstock happened, only about 100 miles away from it. It was black performers in a black neighborhood of New York at a time when there was a lot of upheaval in just the situation of trying to exist as a black person in America. I say that as if we're no longer living in a time that that is true, but it was a, it was a particularly difficult time. The 60s saw the death of not only black icons, but white allies in the fight for equality. It saw the death of Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X, but also John Kennedy and Robert Kennedy. And there was a lot of anger. And this festival is such a celebration. Now, I obviously feel like I actually, I was going to say, I should note, you should be very clear. I am not black. I can't speak to that experience or that culture then or now. But I can say that this film did a masterful job of making me feel present at this event, understand the significance of it, the significance of the individual performers uh, that we see, as well as the event as a whole. And it puts it into the context of the time, what was going on at the time, which just makes everything all the more powerful, uplifting, entertaining, Just it enhances all of it across the board. And the performances are fantastic. I mean, it it kicks off with Stevie Wonder. When Stevie Wonder is your opener, that's that's a strong hand that you're playing. Because it's all just so good. Stevie Wonder, B.B. King, Gladys Knight... Nina Simone, uh, a bunch of performers who I like, I'm not sure I had even heard of before, but were great. They were all so good, fantastic. And not just the music, the speeches, the things that were said to connect with the crowd and with the audience. And there's interviews with some of the performers who are still with us, but also with some people who just attended it. They were just there. They were there in that moment. But it also brings up at the very beginning and then doesn't bring it up again until the end. And the restraint of not bringing this up, you know, continually across the thing makes it all the more powerful. The film says at the very beginning that this festival, these concerts, this event was filmed at the time, and basically nobody saw that footage for 50 years. It was filmed in 1969, and it sat in a vault until 2019, when it was unearthed and Questlove got a hold of it and put this together. And the reason it's really powerful, that that gets brought up at the beginning, but then not reminded until the very end, is you go in knowing that, like, People haven't seen this footage before. But by the time it's over, it feels like a crime, like a violation, like a slap in the face that this footage wasn't seen for 50 years. And like that one of the people who was just an attendee there has this moment of, you know, seeing the footage again and being like, it it was real because... You know, 
It wasn't remembered by anyone who wasn't there. History went out of its way to not remember it. They had all this amazing footage and these amazing performances from these incredible performers, and nobody wanted it. No station, no studio, nobody wanted anything to do with it. The people who shot it couldn't sell it. And so it was left to be forgotten. And after seeing so many great performances and speeches and the power and the passion and the righteous anger, again, I feel like I need to highlight Nina Simone, especially for that holy crap. But after all that to think, the world might not have have remembered this. And that feels so wrong. And the fact that like something like Woodstock, which I don't want to downplay Woodstock. Woodstock, you know, it 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 had its value, it had its worth, but like this if if we're going to remember Woodstock, this feels like it should be at least as well remembered. And I can only hope that this documentary, after getting the attention of winning the Oscar, will get seen enough so that people will start to remember, will start to cherish this the way they hold on to Woodstock. Because, again, as someone who wasn't there, this seems a hell of a lot more like it is worth preserving than Woodstock was. It's powerful and amazing and just, again, such fantastic performers, amazing singers, great uh, musicians. And you get like little glimpses of the personalities of some of the people involved. Like the guy who ran the thing was was a bit of a hustler in the sense that, you know, he would he would make a promise first and then figure out how to actually do it later and he kind of pulled this entire thing together by the seat of his pants, but he did it. it. It's just an amazing moment that I am so glad is, is now preserved in some form. And that the form that it's preserved in is a really good film. This uh, originally premiered on Hulu. I saw it on Disney+, Plus, so it's on there. If you want to see it, I don't think it's that hard to get hold of right now. And I'm going to highly recommend this. And like, just flat out, the music's great. I, it's funny, I forget how much I love soul music until I'm listening to it. And then it's like, yes, I really do love it. Ah, <sighs> Summer of Soul. Did you see it? What did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. What was your favorite performance? Whatever it is, I definitely want to hear it. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, tell me about other music documentaries you really like. If you haven't seen this one yet, Patreon's how I'm able to pay the bills um, and keep this whole operation up and running. And the amount you're able to contribute does help, but uh, don't sweat it too, too much. We take a relaxed attitude around here, so you just come on back next time you need a break. And credits! I gotta shout out my top Patreon supporters, so thank you very much to Zubin Lutfula, Barack, Oliver B, Melinda Walters, Leotha Boy, TT, Renobulax the Poodle, Idolum, Tracy Scrabbit, Vincent Paul Bartolucci, Angry Casper, Adam Lefty Taylor, Shane Ross, Robin Moore, Shayla Gourlay, and Brendan LaRose. Couldn't do it without you.